In this episode of Paddle and Hook, I head about six miles off the coast of Fenwick Island, Delaware to fish and explore with Josh Raleigh and his daughter Sarah. It's not only my first time free diving, but the first time I have ever been bitten by a pelagic fish. It's wild, so stay tuned. You won't want to miss this one. And there's some biomass on board today. All right, so we are out here on the Fenwick Shoals in the Atlantic. Josh has given me some pointers. It's my first time trying to uh, learn how to free dive a little bit. I've got the snorkel kit going here. Um, this could be fun. There was a ton of fish out here. Um, when we drove out, we anchored up on the wreck and there were spade fish and what looked like sheep's head just swimming around. We could look down and visibility was great. We could see it. Uh, so far, there's a ton of life out here. Josh has already caught a couple of sea bass. So now we're gonna hop in the drink and have some fun. While I spent a few minutes getting accustomed to the dive site, Josh wasted no time in his search for dinner. That's awesome, dude. Well done, man. The abundance of oceanic life was striking. Here I turned around to find a school of spade fish just a few yards from the boat. Meanwhile, Josh continued to hunt down those fish. I was trying to take the shot. I hit him, I just skipped him there. Oh. Big, big call. Oh, nice. This is insane. Dude, it's, this is unbelievable. <laughs> I watched Josh reload his spear gun and followed him around to get an idea of how an underwater hunt takes place. Woo! Oh! Dear I saw that! I got the flavor of play! Is that a trigger fish? Big trigger. Looks like a big trigger. Damn! Isn't this awesome? <laughs> this is insane! It's like grocery shopping! Something just pushed through the ass really hard. I think it was a trigger fish. It just drug into me. Leave it to me to figure out how to get bit in the ass. Uh, Josh had a, a fish on his spear, and I was uh, he was taking it to the boat, and I was sort of between <laughs> between him and the fish on the spear. And as it came up, the trigger fish got a little bite of my almost my butt through my trunks here. You can see that or not? <laughs> Isn't that crazy? <laughs> Like, what was the hunt story on the trigger there? Uh, I dropped down, the trigger fish usually spin off the top of the wreck. I saw him, and he was a pretty decent stout, so I had to kind of just go in and go after him. Uh, he was the biggest one down there, so that's the one you shoot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's always a good roll. These are phenomenal conditions. What's it normally like around here, like I mean, visibility this is wise? 10. Yeah. 10 so, for a good hunt, you know, for an okay. 15 and you're getting real good, 20 and you're like stoked. Yeah, so and to today's have better top, than that. Bottom 30 at least, this is phenomenal. While Josh and Sarah prepped their scuba gear, they explained some of the safety tactics and precautions they take because luck favors those who prepare. So I always wear gloves because we can grab onto like chunks of metal and hold on, or if I gotta dig a fish out. Yeah. And then I hook into the anchor with this and then we go around. So. Huh. So a bunch of fail safes. Yeah. I'll be up here if you need anything. Watching the bubble trail. Uh -oh. right. While Josh and Sarah are, you know, down at the bottom on the wreck, 
swimming around and uh, shooting some fish. I'm gonna stay up top side here, mind the boat, and see if I can pull in a few sea bass or you know, tog or trigger fish, whatever's biting. All right, let's talk about rigging real quick. Since I am out here and know that visibility is incredibly clear, I'm gonna go with some uh, 50 pound fluoro leader. Fluoro is, you know, super clear, unlike my braid. I'm just gonna tie a simple bottom rig so I can put a, uh, you know, a couple of sand fleas down there. All right, guys, first drop of the sand flea. Got a little something, a little micro sea bass. And if we have one about triple the size, that would be fabulous eating. I see some bubbles. Looks like Josh and Sarah are uh, right under the boat. There goes Mr. Seabass. Right, I'm ready to drop down and do that again. I got no problems catching micro sea bass all day, it's fun. I kinda don't wanna drop down with them right below us. The bubble trail's kinda going that way, so I'll wait for it to Get a little further and then I'll drop down. I don't want to drop down on top of my friends. So we're fishing right on a wreck. Um, I'll look up and give you some information about the wreck when I edit the video. Oh, I'm getting bit again. Oh, that was quick. It's hard to believe that um, I'm getting bit right here and they're diving right there. The wreck is covered up in little black sea bass like this guy. They're such a handsome fish. Look at those markings. They don't exactly fill the cooler because we can't keep them at that size, but still it's a lot of fun to catch and um, you know, I could do this all day. All right, here comes a little something. Oh, another micro sea bass. What'd you guys see down there? Um, a lot of trigger fish and baby sea bass. Yeah. Big ones. Some, I saw a ton of them. Um, nice. There's a big stingray. I don't know. Is the, is the stingray just kind of hanging on the bottom, not moving around, or was he? No, it swam by. It was ginormous. And then oh, there's wow. like the small ones. I forget what they're called. They're okay, like skates. Yeah, there were so many of those. I can't. That's funny. Yeah, I can confirm the small sea bass. That's what I've been catching up here. Got him that time. Hey. That's the smallest one yet. It's like almost aquarium size, man. It's like half the size of the first one. Got one that time, there we go. Still feels like a micro bass. <laughs> like I was trying to say earlier, these guys have like beautiful colors, beautiful little markings. This one's not painted up like some of the other ones were, but um, even still, look at that. It's a gorgeous little fish. And when they're bigger, they are freaking delicious. They have like a super white flaky meat. I grew up eating it a lot, so it's kind of nostalgic for me. I'm telling you, small sea bass were so abundant, I lost track of how many I even caught. Here's a little montage. That one's a little better than the last sea bass. That feels like a small tog there. Oh, damn, a nice sea bass. Hey, it might be a keeper. Aren't they just beautiful when they have the, um, so they get a little fatty spot right here. It's like a little lump on there. That I think the males do and they get all colored up. Big time in the fall. 
All right, broski, don't slide away. Ah, nope. Like 11 and a quarter. We're moving in the right direction, though. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about this song. I think of Stranger Things when I hear this. It's a palm tree delight, man. <laughs> Looks like Josh is about to shoot some spade fish. He's aiming. They're right here. Oh, I see the I see a little color. You gotta shoot one? You already did. You already did. Oh sick. Yeah, I see a little color in front of him. Holy crap, that's a huge spade fish, Josh. Josh is bringing home the bacon. Got him. So I just flatten this and then drift them off. There we go. Damn, that's so cool. Now, not knowing much about spade fish, other than what I've seen on TV and YouTube. This looks like a mighty big one. Now, I can't take credit for this fish. Josh just speared him. But wow, what a really beautiful species. Look at that. They're uh, free schooling out here in front of the boat. And he just jumped in, waited a minute, swam up to him, and shot one. Gang style. Bam. Let's get this guy some mice. Look at this guy getting work done. Look at that. That's sick. Oh, don't tell me that was on one shot. What? One shot, two hits. This guy is a gangster of fishing. Hey, an oyster toad. A trip wouldn't be complete with the rallies without an oyster toad. <laughs> Conditions were so excellent that before we left to go home, Josh just had to suit up one more time and go snag a few more fish while I decided to play around a bit more. Dude, you didn't come up empty handed at all. The morning came to a close and we had to get back, but that doesn't mean the video is over. Stay tuned, we're gonna turn this into a little catch and cook you don't wanna miss. All right, so it's the next day and I have a lot of fish to clean. Josh was kind enough to give me a couple of spade fish, a couple of trigger fish, and a nice tog. So let's get to it. Now, my personal favorite is the slimiest fish ever. Talto. Oh, and remember one thing. When you're using sharp objects like knives to fillet your fish, it's always a good idea to drink a little adult beverage just to kind of loosen up and, you know, take a risk. <laughs> my favorite one I'm drinking lately is from Dewey Beer Co. Secret Machine. Get yourself a four pack and thank me later. All right, welcome to my kitchen. Today we're gonna try something a little different. If you've watched the show before, you know I love fried tong. It's really hard to beat, um, but we're gonna try it a different way, a little more um, heart healthy, if you will. I'm gonna go ahead and grill it. So, you know, follow me out here to the grill in a second. I'm just gonna wash these fillets off and prepare them. So we're keeping it simple here today. I'm gonna use a little garlic pepper seasoning grinder here. A little coarse sea salt. And of course, I'm gonna to top it off with a little lemon juice here. Can't go wrong putting lemon on seafood. It's just fabulous together. All right, doesn't that look good? Mmm. All right, so let's take this out to the grill. I've gone ahead and preheated things and uh, just pop it on there. It won't take long to finish this meal. All right, I got my little Coleman fired up here. As you can see, I've got the big Weber back there, but we're gonna use the little Coleman grill, a little camping grill. And I'm gonna go ahead and use some of the Pam grilling. It's a high heat formula. I like this. Does the trick and doesn't brown up as much as some of the other 
types of spray I've used. All right. All right, let's get these guys on there. Beautiful. All right, they're starting to look pretty white. Oh, doesn't that look great? Wow. Oh yeah, went ahead and roasted some potatoes and I'm just warming them right back up here on the grill. Should pair well together. All right, this is looking phenomenal. It smells great. I know the seasoning I use on it is great. Take a look at that, guys. Right, time for the verdict. Let's see if grilled tog holds up at all against fried tog. Mmm. It's really good. The meat stays very firm still and uh, it accepts the seasoning really well. I kept it simple as you saw on the recipe. Um, I'd recommend you try grilling tog yourself. It's definitely a little more healthy alternative to frying everything like I tend to do. All right, guys, stay tuned. I'm sure we are going to have a banger of an episode in the next one. There's a big one in the planning. All right, bye-bye now. Mm. Mm.